let's go. I'm sure people will join late. So anyways, welcome, Rev Up, Holding Successful Open Houses is our topic today. As always, if you have questions, Anastasia, um, feel free to interrupt <laughs> me and ask your que questions, or I do have the chat box open as well, so I can see what you put in there. Okay. Um, so open houses, success with open houses, consider the benefits of open houses. Number one, lead generation. That is the number one reason we sell, we host open houses. Only 1% of listings sell by open house. So your strategically getting a listing sold based on an open house is probably not your best course of action to make that happen. So the reason that we host open houses is for generating new leads to add to our database. Um, every single person that enters that house is either a potential buyer or a seller or both. And keep in mind that anybody that can see the sign in a yard, um, statistically, somebody is that can see that sign is going to post their house for sales. So in addition to, um, you know, getting leads for buyers that walk through the property, we also are looking for those seller leads. Um, open houses give us lots of exposure, right? We've got signs everywhere, especially if they're branded signs. It allows you to get your name out there on social media and all the avenues in which we are going to market the open house. So it gets you a lot of exposure. Um, back in the day when I was not hosting a lot of open houses and people were using my signs all the time, I always had people coming up to me going, oh, I saw your sign this week and I saw you were hosting an open house. I didn't have time to stop by. So people see those signs. It gets their attention. It's a good talking point. If open houses are done properly, they are a great use of your time. My goal when I hosted open houses was to always walk away with a minimum of one potential client from that open house, one that I felt pretty solid about. So if I felt so, if I, yep. It's funny that you say that because I checked my voicemail uh -huh. and I wasn't getting notifications and it turns out a lady called me regarding heritage. Oh, so I you called go. her back and um, they're, they actually just got housing on base. Uh -huh. um, and they want to wait until the interest rates go down, um, but they want a house exactly like the one on Heritage. <laughs> so that's a great opportunity for you to do golden letters to that neighborhood, um, minus Heritage and minus the other one that's the basically the same floor plan that just sold. Um, to see if anybody else would be interested in selling. And it's a good talking point with that person that contacted you because they're waiting for rates to fall to get in contact with a lender to get pre-approved now so that everything's in place because oftentimes when rates fall, they don't stay down very long. Um, and so they'll be wanting to be ready to get the move on in finding a house if that happens. Okay. If. If that happens, did you like that? If rates go back down, you got to realize too I, that, I mean, we've been in historically low, like never seen before rates for the last three or four years, right? Like back in the day, we were excited if it hit six, six and a half percent, that was considered low. And we've been floating around these twos and threes and fours for so long that everybody's like, oh my gosh, rates are so high. But the reality is that if you can talk them into, if you find a house that's available and you get them pre-approved and you can get them into that house now, they can refinance when rates go down and get a lower rate. That's what I keep they've secured the people. house. That's what yeah. I keep. And these guys are VA. Yep. So anyways, so I, just, yeah. I would encourage them to go ahead and get pre-approved so that when and if the perfect house falls, uh, pops up or rates drop, that they're already ready to go. Look, Leticia joined us. Leticia joined us. Woohoo! All right. So if done right, they're a great use of your time. Goal is at least one solid prospect from every open house. I consider that a success. Sometimes you get more. In fact, um, Noah and Rachel were an open house lead. And I've now done three transactions for them. Okay, so open houses are great sources of income. Um, worst case scenario, you get lots of practice and you can get some busy work or admin type tasks taken care of while, you, while, while you're there at the open house. Okay, attitude is everything. You've got to walk into that open house knowing that that open house is going to be productive. 
You need to make sure that you plan, prepare, and know the property and the market. We will talk about that here shortly. And you also want to dress professionally. Number one, you are holding an open house intending to be hired by prospective buyers and sellers that walk through that open house. And number two, when you look good, you feel good. And when you feel good and look good, you've got more confidence. So um, make sure you dress professionally or dress in a way at least that you feel confident. Look at all these people joining us late. All right, safety first. Please never, ever, ever host an open house alone. It's for safety. And also please follow the following safety tips. Number one, make sure people know the address of the house that you're holding open, right? Somebody that you check in with, spouse, loved one, neighbor, your mom, I don't really care. Make sure somebody knows what house you're holding open. Make sure they know the hours that you will be there. Even if you're co-hosting with somebody else, it's still a good idea. Make sure they know when you're going to be there. Make sure they know when you anticipate to return home. And it's a good idea to have a code that you can use in case you are in trouble, which allows you to pick up your phone, call a significant other, or call somebody and say, butterflies are pretty today. And they know that, oh my gosh, I need to call 911 to that open house immediately, or I need to go show up there myself, right? So um, if you're like, man, who would I host an open house with? Because Amy just said, never host an open house by yourself. There's lots of options. My least favorite option is hosting it with another real estate agent, okay? Least favorite option is hosting it with another real estate agent because now you have to devise how you're gonna split those leads, what that's gonna look like, how you're gonna share income on future transactions when you get prospects from that deal, what that's gonna look like. And sometimes when it comes to money, people get weird. So anyways, just make sure if you are splitting it with another agent that you go into it knowing what the plan is with those leads and what those transactions are gonna look like that result from that open house. You can contact a lender, right? This is a good way to make lender partnerships to help you host open houses. You guys are going after the same leads for the same purpose. So it works really well. You could talk about insurance agents. You could maybe get a pest inspector, probably not, but maybe like some sort of inspector there at the property with you. Um, uh, so lender, insurance, property inspector, um, you know, the possibilities are, unless you can bring your husband, you can bring your your uh, wife, right? Significant other. You can bring a child, uh, preferably a grown adult child, not a two-year-old. Um, so there's lots of options there so that you're not sitting in the open house alone. It just becomes dangerous. Um, if I, you are, well, question, yes. No, I, I wanted to, because that was, that's a good thing. I wanted to know if, you know, sometimes you could bring like your daughter or somebody that is not in the, in the business, because I always felt like it wasn't, right or it was weird yep. but uh, that's good to know that's good to know that you're saying that yeah absolutely and if you bring somebody that's non-licensed just remember that there are activities they can't questions they can't answer as a non-licensed individual like they can't you know offer the price of the house they can hand them a flyer though with the price of the house on it they can show them around they just when it comes to like the price and the terms they would have to direct it back to you not a big deal but absolutely you can have somebody that's non-licensed there with you it's just best to not be by yourself right okay in addition um if you are there even if you're not by yourself um when people come through your open house um never Oh, well, never, never put yourself in a cornered situation. Okay. So always have an exit strategy in place. Never lead people into bedrooms. We want to just let them go into the bedrooms, right? Direct them to enter in first. That way you've got um, the people and then you, and then the door. So you've always got an exit strategy. And oftentimes when I host open houses, unless it's pouring down rain, like yesterday, um, I'm going to have all of those doors open, the back sliders open, the front doors open. I want to, number one, make it seem accessible and friendly and welcoming when people arrive. And number two, it's a safety thing. If the doors are open, I've got an easy exit strategy in case I ever get in a questionable situation. Check the side gates as well to see if those are unlocked or opened, because um, you may want to go ahead and open those or unlock those if possible, so that if you ever had to exit out the back door, you're not trapped in the backyard. You can get back to the front yard as well. Anastasia has a question. So when we were at Summit, they had these necklaces, they were called Invisaware. And then mm -hmm. if you push the back of it, it summons 
you can either have it directly summon 911, your family members. Um, it was, I think, 99 bucks, and it's like 11 bucks a month. I bought one. Um, number one, it makes my husband feel better that I have that. Um, and two, I like it because it gives extra sense of security. Like if I yeah. can't say something, I can just like press the the necklace or it's a keychain or a scrunchie or it's got, they got so many different options. So awesome. that's also another option. Yeah. So you guys can check out that there's Invisaware. There's also lots of apps that do the same thing as well on your phone. Ones that like, if you have your thumb on it, it's good. But if you take your thumb off longer than three seconds, it automatically calls um, the emergency services like 911 for you um, and alerts them of your location. So there's lots of safety features like that that you can have in place as well. As well as I always recommend that, you know, it's not a bad idea to have like some pepper spray or taser or something to that effect. Um, just as an added layer of protection, especially, you know, think of outside of open houses, you're showing properties. And especially if you're showing properties to people you don't really know that well, always a good um, suggestion to keep yourself protected with uh, the Invisiware necklace or an app or, um, you know, on your person defensive mechanisms. So um, just make sure that you're aware of that. And, that, and um, you know, when you're hosting an open house too, if somebody walks in and they, it, feels, you feel uneasy, trust your gut, step outside and wait until they're done. Right. So always put yourself in a safety position, safety first. Um, so that's my safety tips for the day. And my, my post of never host an open house alone. It's a good idea, right? You can build relationships with lenders. And when I, you know, we always talk about um, business to business relationships and they should be reciprocal. And if I'm giving them leads, they should be doing something for me. And it may not be leads. If you've got a great lender partnership that you're sending people to, um, it may be just be that they're willing to sit at open houses with you three times a month, right? Like I'm totally good with that. That's a benefit to me. If I can get a lender in an open house, that's fabulous. Number one, we're not fighting over leads. They get all the leads from that open house. They might turn them into something before I can turn them into something. Number two, um, if somebody walks through the door and they're like, man, I'd really like to buy this house, but we weren't even really thinking about buying a house, but this one's the one you can immediately direct them to the lender. They can start the pre-approval process right then and there. So it's super handy. And most people have questions about what are rates doing? What's the, you know, it's, it's not even so much about the real estate market anymore. It's more about the mortgage market. So if you've got somebody there, that's a lender that can answer those questions directly, then you don't have to speak outside of your area of expertise. So great idea there to have a lender partnership. And there are, there's like 7,000 lenders in town. You can check with our in-house lender, um, Brickhouse Mortgage to see if they've got somebody that can sit in open houses with you. And then outside of that, there's a whole bunch of mortgage professionals in the area and you can just reach out to them and, and check and see if that's something they'd be willing to do and help you form that relationship with them. Any questions about safety before we move on? No, ma'am. All right. Did somebody say something? I just said, no, ma'am, no questions. <laughs> Fabulous. All right. Next is um, your open house success kit, right? Put together an open house success kit. You should have a minimum of six to 12 personalized open house signs. I do recommend personalized because again, people will recognize them and begin to see that you're all over the place and be like, Oh my gosh, Anastasia is everywhere. And if I'm going to buy a house, I should check in with her because she's got, she's everywhere all the time, right? You want to make sure you have some business cards, some buyer handbooks, right? Like your buyer presentation, personal marketing materials, have a tape measure with you. Cause oftentimes people are like, oh, how big's the garage? Because I've got a boat and I want to, don't want to leave it on the street. I want to park it in the garage. They want to make sure it's the right depth um, or they want to check the side parking to see if their RV is going to fit. So make sure you've got that tape measure. Occasionally people have that like huge oversized couch and they want to make sure that's going to fit in the living room. Um, maybe a clipboard or some evaluation sheets, right? So they can give you feedback on the property, a tablet or laptop with the open house app installed. If you're going to use a digital check-in method, maybe bring along some bottled waters. If, even if you're not going to offer them to everybody, at least keep one for yourself. Um, some tables and chairs, if the house is vacant, a flashlight and some pens. Okay. I always traveled around with a little 
folding TV tray, a little nice wood folding TV tray. And that's what I used to have people sign in at properties um, when they entered into the doorway. It allowed me to kind of block the doorway so that they were trapped to sign in. So that's what I would recommend. Some of those things you may just want to keep in a little basket in like your trunk of your car on a regular basis, right? Like business cards, handbooks, um, marketing materials, that tape measure, some waters, maybe a clipboard, um, flashlight pins. You may just want to keep in your car anyways, and maybe even some snacks so that as you're out showing properties, you can offer waters and snacks to the people viewing the properties that you've got a tape measure available, right? So some of those things are good, not just for open houses, but for all the time. Um, and then I'm going to walk you through creating a seven day open house system. Okay. We're going to take you through it day by day on what you should be doing to prepare for your open house. And again, these are just suggestions and ideas. And, um, you can always build on this and make it better. Or you could be like, Amy, I prefer to slide, like fly by the seat of my pants. I'm going to host an open house on Saturday and I'm going to show up on Saturday and host it. That's great. Right. Great. Step one. Before we jump into this seven day open house series, does anybody have any questions so far? No. All right. Yep. All right. Fabulous. So day one, this is going to be five days prior to your open house. Okay. Five days prior to the open house, you are going to select the property. You're going to look at location, condition, price, and terms right? Is it in a location in which you want the house, you want to sell houses, right? Is it in a location that you feel safe? Is it near main streets? We ultimately don't want to host an open house where they have to make 37 turns to get there because they will get lost and give up before they get there. Or one that from the main street, like in Vacaville, you've got Marshall Road. That's this really long road that runs between like Alamo and well, it runs all the way to Leisure Town, right? So if you're in the middle of that, you may not want to host that house because it's a long ways from those main arteries. But you obviously there's other main streets closest, but just make sure the location is desirable. Um, check the condition of the house. If it's like a porter's house, it may not be conducive to an open house, right? And then also price and terms. Is it in an area where you want to pick up potential buyers and terms of which would be agreeable for you for potential buyers or other listings? Your own listing, whenever possible and appropriate, host your own home open. If you've got listings, it's always better to do that. You will keep your sellers happy. Just, you know, I told you that only one person a home sell by open houses. We don't tell our sellers that. Um, we tell our sellers that open houses help sell properties because we want to hold them open. So um, host your own open whenever possible. Your name's in the yard. Your name's on the sign. It'll just help with more brand recognition. Um, if you don't have your own, check inside the office. Who has listings inside the office that you can hold open? There's always, almost always in the foxhole, there's um, posts for people that have open houses available for the weekend. Um, you want to hold open houses on listings in your farm area. So if I don't have any listings, my next choice is going to be, do I have a farm area and are there any listings inside my farm area? Even better if they are um, listed by somebody in our office, that would be the best case scenario. Just so everyone knows our office policy is that we should only be holding um, open houses in properties listed by our office. Um, so just throwing that policy out there. Take with it and do what you want. Um, vacant versus occupied property. I always prefer if I'm going outside of my own listings, I'm going outside of my farm, I'm going to look for vacant properties first. There's just less liability there. I don't have to worry about things walking out the door. I don't have to worry about the sellers not getting the memo that they're supposed to be out of the house at a certain time or coming back too soon. Um, so I always prefer vacant properties over occupied. And is there a better day, weekends versus weekdays? They all work, right? Just be strategic about the times that you're going to hold them open to increase your odds of good attendance. Okay, there's no wrong or right where day of the week to hold open houses. Most people think, oh, weekends are best. Yeah, but still people are busy on the weekends. So especially like if it's near a school area or school traffic, if you host it in the afternoon when people are picking up their kids, you might get people to stop by or in the evenings, especially if it's staying lighter later now. 
Um, you know, you could do as people are coming home from work on a weekday, um, great opportunity there. And if there's a vacant listing with our office um, and you're going to be sitting in the office doing busy work, doing office stuff, go sit in an open house. You've got a 99% chance that somebody's going to walk through that door if you host an open house than you do getting a lead inside the office. Okay. Your, your percentage of, of potential goes up significantly. Okay, so go sit in the open house and get all your busy work done there. Bring a little like folding table and chair and work away with that open house sign so that you can pick up some leads instead of sitting in the office. Okay, any questions about what we're going to do on day one, selecting the property? All right, moving along to day two. This is going to be four days prior to the open house. You're going to make sure the listing agent enters into the MLS with your name and phone number as the host in the info box. Okay, so there's a little info box when you enter in the open house into the MLS and they wanna put hosted by Leticia Gomez and your phone number there in case anybody has questions, they can reach out to you directly. Um, you want it in the MLS, that's how it's gonna push it out to all those other sites, your Zillow's, your Realtors, your Homes.com, your, I don't even know, there's so many sites now. So um, Trulia, right, all those, it gets pushed out from the MLS. You want to create flyers for your open house that you can send out. And also you're going to create a Google Drive is what I highly recommend. Every time I host an open house inside of my Google Drive, I create a folder and I name it the address of that property. And everything that I'm going to create, which we'll talk about here in a minute, is going to go into that Google Drive. And I'm going to have very little paper available for people to take with them at the open house because I want to trade people information in my Google Drive with their information. Okay, so I'm trying to, to trade value for contact information, for valid contact information. I'm going to have everybody sign in. Um, you're going to identify the homes that you're going to door knock. I recommend a minimum of 25 homes. So what's that look like? Maybe five on either side and, and 15 across the street or something like that. But you wanna identify what doors are you gonna knock and how many, right? 50 to 100 is probably better, but minimum of 25. You're gonna work on creating the social media posts, although we may not be sending them out yet. We're just gonna have those created and ready to go either in our One Design account or in our Canva account is what I would recommend to create those. Um, and the last little point there just needs to get edited off. It says weekdays versus weekends. Okay, your Google Drive for visitors. Okay, here's what I recommend. I love Google Drive. Inside that Google Drive is going to be the MLS data sheet, the one page. I usually do the one page client report. Okay. It's going to have the property flyer with my information on it branded to me for that property, right? Nice flyer with the pictures and the description and the price on it. Maybe a copy of the plot map maybe a copy of the school information, area information, if there's any property disclosures available, those are going into my Google Drive. Um, nearby businesses, the property feature sheet, right? If there's additional upgrades or items or things that have to do with that property that maybe aren't highlighted in the MLS, I'm gonna have a feature sheet. Um, I'm going to prepare a CMA on the property, right? Um, and I'm gonna have that in my Google Drive and the neighborhood update. So a really good way to get the information for like the school and the area and nearby businesses would be a site called listreports.com. So L-I-S-T-R-E-P-O-R-T-S.com, listreports.com. It's free. You log in, you create a new property package, you plug the address in there and it pulls all the details of the surrounding areas. It's fabulous. It has a schools page. It has a restaurants page. It has a um, activities page and you can edit all of those pages as well. So it's a super cool, fun graphics way of knocking out that school and area and nearby businesses. Okay. Any questions about the Google Drive? All right. So that's day four, your preparation. We're just getting everything ready to go for our day two four days prior to the open house is our preparation day. Day three or three days prior to the open house is going to be our promotion beginning day. 
So here's where we're going to post about the open house on social media. We may want to boost that social media post. You don't have to spend a lot of money on it, but you can boost it out there to decide what your audience is that you want to see that post. Um, that might be a good opportunity to boost that post in areas um, that may be, you know, if we're selling a house in Vacaville, it may be that the Bay Area is moving to the Vacaville area. So we may, may want to boost it in the Bay Area, right? Commute distance from the property to draw people in. You may want to create a video announcement for the open house. Um, and then if you have sign writers that say, you know, open Saturday or open Sunday or open Wednesday, if they have the time, this would be a good day to go install those sign writers on the signpost. Okay, even if it's not your own home, most agents are totally open to you installing those writers. If it's not yours, you always want to ask first, though. It may also be a good opportunity when you're there installing that writer to, to schedule a time with the seller that you can do that video announcement about the open house. And you may also go ahead and like film a video walkthrough of the property or even do a live stream before your open house of the video walkthrough and let people know that you're hosting it open, right? So lots of different ideas that you can do there on your day three, which would be three days prior to your open house. Any question about day three? Okay, our goal with everything is to create a systematic process that's repeatable and scalable. So as your business grows, you can just plug and play these systems into place. Day four is a continued promotion day. This is gonna be two days prior to your open house. You are going to send your open house invite to your database or your circle of influence, right? Let them know that, hey, I'm hosting an open house this weekend, come by, check it out. If you know anybody looking to you know, buy a home, this could be a good fit for them. Great time just to send out that invite to your database. You want to make sure you update social media posts to ensure that it's showing up as the most recent, right? So you can um, you can edit it, you can comment on it, you can like it, you can share it in more places. Um, you're going to send instructions to the listing agent for sellers, right? It's going to be something like this, right? It'll be, hey... Um, Shauna, this is Amy. I'm hosting your house open this weekend from on Saturday from 11 to 1. Please let the sellers know that I will arrive around 1030 and I'll probably be at the property until about 130 just so they know what to expect. In addition, can you advise your sellers to please make sure to walk through the property prior to my arrival and tuck away anything of value or any meds, prescription medications they may have on the property. Um, and I recommend tucking those into drawers and usually like the second or lower drawers um, just to protect them, to make sure everything's ready to go. I'll do a second walkthrough of the property before um, we actually open the house for the open house. And at the end of the open house, I'll be reaching back out to you to provide any feedback that I may have, right? So we're just going to send that over to the listing agent. You can call them, you can text it to them, you can email it. I highly recommend either text or email because that way they remember all the information they're supposed to pass on to the seller, okay? Some agents, I can guarantee you haven't thought about telling their sellers that ever, or they may not tell them when you're going to arrive and when you're going to leave. So it just sets it up for a successful open house. You want to also on day four, identify the number and the location of your directional signs, right? Where are they going to go? Um, how many do you need? Do you have enough signs? You may even want to like drop a little map and pinpoint it. If we plan where our signs are going to go, you're less likely to forget where you put them and you're make sure you've got full coverage from any access points that there might be for that property. Um, when you get a little busier, or if you want to, if you just hate putting out open house signs like me, I always paid somebody to put my open house signs out and pick them back up for me, right? So they always met me at the property about 30 minutes ahead of time. They would pick up all of my signs. They would go, I'd take a little map. I'd show them where they needed to go. They would go put the signs out. And then at the time the open house was supposed to be closed, they would come back and start picking up all of those open house signs or maybe 15 minutes in advance and come back by and drop them off for me. I paid them a little bit of money. It was a win-win. I didn't arrive at the open house either soaking wet from the rain or sweaty from the sun. And it made my life easier and happier and made open houses that much better. So there's always that option. If you've got teenagers in your life, it doesn't take much money, right? They can work for like $17 an hour at Chick-fil-A. So pay them 20 bucks to drop off and pick up all your signs. 
Um, you may want to do a little bit of training if you think somebody doesn't grasp the idea of like directional arrows and which way they should go. Or you may like on your map, you know, you put where the sign location is and where the arrows should point. So it may take a little bit of training at first, but it makes it a really successful event and you don't get your nice professional clothes all gross and dirty. Any questions about day four continued preparation? All right, moving right along to day five. This is one day prior to the open house. We're gonna continue our preparation. This is gonna be our door knock day. We're gonna go around and knock those doors that we identified. We're gonna take our flyer with us that we created back on the first day to hand out as an invite. Um, we are gonna resend that open house to your database or circle of influence if you want to. Maybe you send it out via email. Now you might wanna send it out via text blast, right? To just make them aware, give them a little reminder. Um, and here's the date that I like to go through the MLS. And if I'm hosting a house open, I'm going to think about, okay, well, if somebody didn't want this house. Why would they not want to buy this house? Right? Maybe it's a three bedroom home. And I'm thinking, well, somebody who didn't want this home, maybe they want four bedrooms, right? Or maybe this home didn't have a pool and maybe somebody would be looking for a pool or maybe this home's 1500 square feet and somebody might want a bigger house like at 1800 plus square feet. So I'm gonna go through the MLS now because usually you know, one day prior to the open house, most homes have come on the market at that point. And I'm gonna create a list of homes. So I'm gonna do property search for homes in Vacaville or in that neighborhood, or maybe it's in a different school district, right? So I'm gonna do a search like homes that have four bedrooms versus three. I'm going to print the, I'm going to go to reports on the MLS and I'm just going to go to like the one line report where it just lists out all the properties. I'm going to save it as a PDF and I'm going to tuck that into my Google Drive as four bedroom homes or maybe homes with pools, right? So I'm going to create several lists of if somebody didn't want this house, what would they be looking for? Maybe the house that I'm holding open is like 3000 square feet and most people are like, uh, 2,500 is big enough, right? So maybe they want it a little smaller. Maybe they want a bigger lot size. Maybe they want it, right? So whatever that might be, I'm just going to create four or five lists of additional properties that somebody might be interested in. That way, when somebody walks through my open house and I say, oh, well, what do you think? And they're like, oh, oh man, this house is really nice, but I really need four bedrooms. I'd be like, oh, great. I've got a whole list of the four bedroom homes available in the area. Would you like me to send that to you? Right. I've now become the area expert. I have read their mind. I've predetermined what they might need. I can make notes that they're looking for a four bedroom house. And now I've got a valid email or a phone number for them that I can send that list to out of my Google Drive. Super handy. So that's what the add multiple list of other listings to the Google Drive is. OK, any questions about day five? Right. We also want to probably boost our posts again or increase or repost um, on our social media to get that out there again. So just a little reminder to make sure you keep those posts top of line. And if you haven't already, make sure on those social media posts that you're sharing it on your business page, you share it to your personal page. And then also that you join all of the house hunting groups or what's going on groups in the area so that you can share those open houses to those groups. You may also want to think about in addition to your area, again, where would people be moving from to this area and join those groups as well so that you can share the posts on those groups, okay? That brings us into day six, which is zero days prior to the open house day because it is event day. You're gonna arrive early. I like to arrive about 30 minutes early. This is my time that I'm gonna do that walk through of the property, make sure the valuables, make sure prescription medications are tucked away, make sure everything is where it should be. Does something need to get scooted over, moved out of the way to make it flow a little bit better, to make it show nicer? I'm gonna open all the doors. I'm gonna turn on all the lights. Okay, I'm probably not gonna open the doors yet. I'm just gonna turn on all the lights, make sure everything's open, inviting. If it's warm, turn on the fans. If it's cold, make sure the heater's on, right? All those things, make sure it's temperate in the house. Um, I'm gonna make sure all the curtains are open. I'm gonna double check like the throw pillows and the blankets, the magazines, right? I'm gonna stage the house appropriately. If you feel like something needs to be moved, like you walk into the house down the entryway and there's a chair blocking the entrance from the you know entry into the living room, like scoot the chair over a little bit, that's okay. People might get a little upset, but not too bad. It'll be okay. Sometimes you walk into the house and you're like, oh my gosh, where's their broom? Because they didn't even try to clean this house up, right? So you may need to do a quick sweep. 
of the floors. You may need to do something like that. A wipe down of the kitchen countertops. Maybe you need to tuck people's, you know, personal items away. Maybe they got bras or underwear hanging out in the bathroom. Nobody wants to see that. So you may need to stash those away. So you want to look through the houses if you're a buyer. Then um, you're going to, once the house is ready to go, if I'm putting out my own signs, I'm going to turn around, lock the door again, and then I'm going to go put my signs out. Now I know that as soon as I start putting those signs out and I get back to the house, all I have to do is open the door and it's ready to go. My sign in table set up, everything's ready to go. So I'm going to go put those open house signs out. Um, I'm going to make sure that I have like a little basket of downtime stuff. So if nobody's passing through the open house, I've got other work that I can be working on, maybe note cards, maybe updating my database. Maybe I bring my computer in and then I just prepare to have fun. Okay. Day six of open house. During the open house, conducting the open house, ready, set, action. We're going to acknowledge people when they come in. Oh, welcome. Come on in, meet and greet. And I'm going to ask them to sign in. Just so you guys know, I require people to sign in if they want to see my open house. The whole reason I'm hosting my open house is to get leads. So if they're unwilling to sign in, number one, they could be up to shady business. And number two, they probably weren't going to connect with me anyways. They can walk away and go someplace else. I don't really care. They're not that interested. I turn people away. You can, or you don't have to. It's totally up to you. That's just my policy. I have a little sign when they walk in that says, for the safety and security of the property, both myself and the sellers require you to register upon entering. So it makes it super simple. And then I just ask them to. Also with my sign-in, I don't do one of those sheets that have like five or six or 10 different people's sign-ins on it. I give everybody their own little half sheet of paper. I find that people are more willing to give their information if they know other people can't see it. So they fill it out, they hand it to me, they're a little happier that way. You wanna make sure that as people are walking through the open house that you engage them with questions, right? How long have they been looking for homes? How have they been seeing homes? Are they pre-approved? Do they have a house to sell? Where do they currently live, right? Um, why this area? What do they think of the house? So there's all sorts of questions you can ask them as they pass through the house. I don't follow them around an open house. I usually position myself kind of in the central area of the property and I let them wander through and explore the house on their own. Um, I'm going to confirm the contact info received, right? The, that is, so if they're like, oh man, I want that four bedroom. This is a good opportunity. Hey, I've got a list of four bedroom homes. I've got the email shown here. Is this the best email for you? And they're like, oh no, that's our trash email. Here, let me give you my real one, right? Or you can confirm the phone number so you can text it to them. It's a good way to confirm that information. You're gonna watch and listen, right? Watch people walk through. What are they thinking? Um, who do you wanna connect with? What are they saying about the property? What are they saying about their home search? You can learn a lot from people just by observing and listening. Um, and then you wanna ask questions that will lead to appointment opportunities, right? So you're looking for listing opportunities or people that own, you're looking for buyer opportunities or people who rent or people who also need to sell a home and buy a home, right? So we're looking for both of those. Um, let's see, do we go on? Your goal is to make those appointments, okay? So our goal is to make those appointments. It's always better to schedule an appointment there on the spot for a future time than say, well, let me get back in touch with you later this week, right? It's the same idea as like walking into a car dealership. If they can get you to sit down at the table right now, you're more likely to buy that car than if you're like, I'll come back later. Your chances of coming back later actually drop substantially. So we wanna set those appointments. We don't actually have to hold those appointments during the open house, but we want to set those appointments. So if somebody walks through the property and they're like, man, yeah, I've got a property to sell. So I was really just coming by to see what this property was like, cause I live down the street and I wanted to see how my house compared. That would be a good time to schedule a walk through their property. Well, hey, I wrap up here at about 1.30. Are you available at two today? I could just come by and do a quick walk through and make some suggestions of what you could do to help your house shine. And then after I've seen your property, I can put together a market analysis for you of kind of what you could expect list wise and, and that, right? So you could set that up, schedule that walk through. For renters or buyers, offer them a sample of your buyer system, right? Schedule that buyer consultation appointment right? Hey, 
absolutely your first time buyer or you're looking at purchasing, I'd love to sit down with buyers, just walk them through, make sure that everybody has a clear understanding of how the buying process works, answer any questions or concerns that you might have and get you set up on a property search. Does Wednesday at five o'clock work for you or, or Thursday at, at 10, right? Set up that appointment during the open house. Or you can even schedule showing appointments, right? If that person came through like, man, I really wanted some four bedroom homes. You can be like, oh, I've got a whole list for you. Let me send it over. And then if you'd like, I can actually go ahead and schedule an appointment for later on this afternoon or you know, maybe Monday or Tuesday um, to show you some properties off that list of ones that meet your criteria. Does Monday or Tuesday work better for you, right? Or there's the day or in the evening work best, right? So it set that next showing appointment. Any questions so far about the day of the open house? No. No. Okay, we're going to prepare the open house. We're going to host the open house. And we're going to set appointments. And then after the open house is done, we are going to close down the open house. So we want to return that house as we found it. If I've tucked things away for the open house, I usually try to open up like my notes page on my phone and I make notes of what I tucked away and where I put it so that when I close down the open house, I can go back through the house, look at my notes and make sure I return everything to where it was when I got there. If the sellers return before I'm done, I'm going to brief the sellers and I'm going to try to keep it positive, right? Oh yeah, we had four groups come through. Great feedback. I'll be reaching out to your agent, right? If they're not your sellers, they are your sellers. You can give them whatever feedback you would like. Um, if they aren't back yet, you can write them a little note and just say, thank you so much for allowing me to hold your house open today. Um, I'll be in touch with all the feedback to your agent. We had you know, five groups through or whatever that might be. You wanna make sure you pick up all of your open house signs. Make sure again, that you had a list of where you were gonna put those so you can make sure you get them all back and count the number of signs that you put out so that again, you make sure you get them all. There's nothing worse than having a sign left behind and getting a fine for a left behind open house sign. Um, you wanna make sure you create a thank you video with the key features of the property, right? So was it a gorgeous kitchen? Was it the ugliest fireplace on the block? Was there a beautiful backyard? Whatever that is, positive or negative. I walked through one house one time and the ceiling, it looked like they tried to like retexture the ceiling and they um, like, threw it up there. It was like points sticking down from the ceiling, right? Key feature of the property. We're just going to create a little key of thank you video. Um, you, you, know, you can do it with your phone, um, have the feature in the image, and you're just going to say, hey, you know, it's Amy. I just wanted to thank you so much for passing through my open house today. If you have any questions about this home or any other home that's for sale, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm going to record that video so that I can send it back later on. Um, I'm going to provide feedback to the listing agents, right? So if you're not the listing agent, I'm going to follow up with an email, just let them know who passed through. If there were agents that passed through, I'd pass along their information as well, right? We had seven groups come through, three of them had agents. Here's their agent's information in case you want to follow up with them. The feedback was good, or here's copies of the feedback sheets. If you actually had feedback sheets, right? Um, you know, there was a lot of good feedback. The house showed really nicely. It was clean. A lot of people mentioned that it may be overpriced, right? Whatever that might be. Or the dogs, the neighbor's dog was barking the entire time we were here and everybody commented on it, right? So whatever that feedback is, provide it to the listing agent. And then you're going to prepare for follow-up right? Follow up, follow up, follow up. We're trying to get leads. We're trying to turn them into transactions. Any questions at, on the day of the open house? All right. Day seven is going to be our follow-up day. This is one day post open house. Now keep in mind that if you host an open house on Saturday, you could bump your follow-up day to Monday. That's totally okay, right? You can adjust this to fit your schedule. You should not be working seven days a week. So you should have days off. So you should adjust this um, seven day open house plan accordingly. You may start a day earlier so you can accommodate your day off. You may um, drag it to like an eight day process so that you enjoy those days. Um, the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to send out those thank you videos to all the attendees, right? We recorded that video. We didn't mention names in it. We're just going to shoot it out as the text blast to any of the people that pass through our open house, right? The, the reason I say do a key features is it reminds them of the conversation they had with you when you were in that house. It brings back what house you held open with that key feature. 
Okay, that's why I always say do the video in front of one of the key features, negative or positive, it doesn't matter. Um, you're gonna make sure you add any new prospects captured to your database, get them in there. We're gonna send thank you notes out to all of the attendees that you have addresses for. And you're gonna reach out to the attendees daily for week one, and then you're gonna add them to what we would call an eight by eight campaign. We're trying to get them to respond. We have captured them, they are our zoo animals. We've got their information. Now we want to connect with them. So we want them to start responding to us. So this is kind of what day one of follow-up is gonna look like. Here's what that week one follow-up looks like. Remember I said week one over here, um, reach out to the attendees basically daily, right? So on day one, we're gonna add them to our database and the thank you video and put a note card in the mail, right? We already talked about that. Day two, we're gonna add them to a property search and send a text message to follow up, right? Either, you know, it could just be like a general search or if we had more conversation, we know exactly what it is that they're looking for. We're gonna set them up on that search either through like Real Scout or through Berries. And then I'm gonna send them a text message like, hey, Leticia, just a heads up. You passed through my open house this weekend. We talked about how you were looking for a four bedroom home. So I went ahead and, and set you up on a search to receive a new four bedroom properties as they arrive on the market. You should see that hitting your email starting today. Let me know if you have any questions or you want me to adjust that search in any way, right? We're trying to get a response. So we're not just gonna send that text message like, hey, I did this for you. Please let me know if you want me to change it, tweak it, you know, whatever. Let's respond, right? Day three, we're gonna send them a copy of the buyer info packet. Um, send them a text message with a potential property through the app and ask if they would like to schedule an appointment to see it, right? So we have their email and their number so we can um, email out that buyer information packet or the buyer presentation to them so they get all the information in that buyer presentation if we haven't been successful at scheduling that appointment yet. And then also we set them up for a search. So let's say, hey, I saw this property. I thought, I thought you might like it. Something similar to what they walked through during the open house or something similar to what they talked about that they were looking for. Um, and then I, I recommend sharing that through the app because now you've shared your app with them, right? Okay, hey, um, here's a property that I thought matched um, you know, what you were looking for. Would you like to schedule an appointment to see it, right? It's either they're going to get a response one way. Ooh, I love that property. Yes, let's see it. Or no, I'm working with another agent. Or, oh, no, um, that one doesn't match. Like we definitely want something that has a yard or has a, a space to park our RV, right? We're trying to get them to give us some feedback on that property. Um, one thing I never ask when people pass through my open houses, just so you know, I never ask them if they are have an agent representing them. Okay, don't ask, don't tell is my policy. So um, it, if it comes up in conversation where I'm going to ask them, oh, have they seen a lot of properties? Did they just start their home search? If they said, oh, we're just starting, right? Then we just talk about what kind of house they're looking for or what, where they currently live. So I know what their situation is, right? If they're like, oh my gosh, yeah, we've seen so many properties. Be like, oh, are you just passing through open houses or has somebody been showing you properties? Oh, our agent has, right? Now I know their agent has, but I don't always directly go out and be like, hey, do you have an agent? Because people lie all the time, all the time, okay? And just because they have an agent doesn't mean they're happy with their agent. So um, I just wanna keep those lines of communication open. Day four, we're gonna call and see if they receive the property search email in the buyer packet. Hey, Anastasia, I was just checking in. You passed through my open house this last weekend. I went ahead and emailed you a copy of the home buyer's guide um, to buying a home or a buyer's guide to buying a home um, to your email. I also set you up for a property search. I just wanted to check and see if you'd receive those, right? We can leave a message if they don't answer. If they answer, now we've had a good conversation with them and we can flush out more of what their intentions are. Day five, I'm going to send them an email with preferred lenders and a text and ask if they would like a list of open homes for the weekend, right? So I'm going to send that email out and say, hey, wasn't sure if you were pre-approved or not, but here are some lender recommendations, some local lender recommendations um, that could help walk you through to see, um, you know, what loan programs you may qualify for, right? And then maybe a text message saying, hey, just checking in. Um, you passed through my open house last weekend. Would you be interested in getting a list of the open houses that are coming up this weekend, right? I'm just trying to get in and get them to respond. 
day six. I'm going to send them a text to let them know to have a great weekend and let them know that you're available if there's anything out there that came on the market that they want to see, right? That wraps up our, our week one of communication on a daily basis with them. So hoping to get them to respond. We know that the further out it goes from the time that we met with them until the time that they actually respond, the less likely it is that they will. So we want to try to really be in there those first that first week. After that first week, um, we would move it to what we call that eight by eight campaign, which we talked about in the database follow up where you're touch reaching out to them once a week for the next eight weeks. OK, and then you're going to if they still aren't responding to that. We never give up on people. Then we roll them over to what we call like a 19 to connect, where we're reaching out to them 19 times on an annual basis until they start responding to us. Okay. Any questions about the follow up plan, either the day seven or that first week of follow up? Um, no, Amy, well, can I just say something? This is where I, I have always trouble. I, you know, I say I, I'm going to follow up and I, you know, I start, I send them a text, I send them an email. Um, but then if they don't respond, I just give up. I, I mean, I, I just said, okay, fine. And maybe I put them on the, on the drip and, and that's it. I don't follow up anymore. If they don't answer, then I don't follow up. And that's my problem. Yeah, but right. So that's most agents don't follow up. They do the same thing you do. They host an open house. Somebody passes through. They call them once or twice. They don't answer. They don't respond. And they give up on them and they don't continue to reach out. And we know that most people, it takes seven to eight interactions to get them to respond and, and build to a point that they're ready to actually work on building that relationship. So we never want to die off early. So that's why like putting like a plan like this together and knowing exactly what our next step is going to be. And here's what we do on day one, day two, day three, we can set this up in our, um, our one suite as a drip campaign to remind you to do these things. So when you add those contacts into your database from the open house, you can set them up on that drip campaign and then it'll remind you of what you need to do each day. So that all you have to do is look at your notifications inside of one suite and know exactly what the next step is. And then you can check it off and mark it done. So if we can make it a systematic process instead of just kind of a haphazard follow-up, we're may way more likely to accomplish those follow-up tasks and this allows you that you can now time block on your calendar as well. Man, if I hold an open house this weekend, I need to make sure that on, um, you know, come Monday, I need to time block time to follow up with those leads, right? And then I need a, a little bit of time each day for each of the follow-up steps after that. And then that 19 to connect, right? If we get through the first week and they're not responding, we get through another eight weeks and they still aren't responding to us after reaching out on a weekly basis, then we roll that 19 to connect, which has four annual phone calls, one per quarter, a monthly email, right? So we're still connecting with them. We don't give up on them. We always keep reminding them that, hey, we're here. So systematic, scalable plan. So really quick. So you said one suite has like a a, a system to follow up. Yeah. So on one suite the, has on a set of drip campaigns that you can um, create inside of there. I've hosted a couple trainings on it. So if you go to the YouTube channel, you should be able to see setting up um, drip campaigns okay. inside of one suite. And I think okay, I think we touch on it again here soon, potentially. All right. Perfect. Or we did Thank already. You. I can't remember. It's a little blur, but um, but there's some trainings on it in there. And if you go into one suite and look for um, drip campaigns, there's a bunch of trainings they have inside of there as well. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Any other questions, thoughts, or ha ha's from today's training? Did you guys find it useful and helpful? Absolutely. <laughs> It's always helpful. Good. Everything, you, these classes are very helpful. Good. It was great, Amy. Thank you. Fabulous. You're welcome. Um, as always, Abby just put the attendance log in the comments section. So if you look in the little chat, you can click on that link to log your attendance. And as always, make sure you're completing your one habit of at least a minimum of three calls or conversations each day about real estate. 
three people added to your database and six notes sent out, handwritten, thank you, hope you're doing well type notes to people's mailboxes. People like getting mail. Um, and you can even you know, put your little logo on there. Just remind them you're in real estate. People will love you. This will lead to success. Hope you guys all enjoyed your open house training. Hope it gave you some tangible things that you can put in place into your business. Again, when we talk about lead gen, which is what open houses are, you should have five different types of lead generation methods that you're working on in your business. One should be that sphere of influence or circle of influence. What's inside your database already? We should be working them with either a 19 to connect or a 36 to convert, um, which we went over on the database training. We'll cover it again over and over and over again what those steps are. Um, in addition, the second um, type of lead gen should be leads from listings. As you all get listings, you should be generating leads from those listings. And then you should choose three additional ones. Open houses are just one option. We covered farms yesterday. There's a hundred and different types of you know ways to lead generate. There's no one wrong or right way. We cover um, farm and social media and open houses inside of rev up because those are easy ways to get out there and start generating business fairly quickly and just create a lifestyle of lead generation. So that's why we mentioned those, but there's lots of options out there. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at any time. I'm always here to help you guys along and help you grow your businesses. I will see you all tomorrow at four o'clock. And the training for tomorrow at four o'clock is up in the air right now. It says the NHD report, but we may be pushing that to next Thursday and I may be covering something else this Thursday. So stay tuned. I'll keep you guys updated in the group me chat. Cool. Thanks, Amy. Absolutely. Thank you, Amy. I Have might not be day. there tomorrow, okay. but I'll see it in YouTube if, if I miss it. Thank you. Perfect. Sounds good. Thanks. Bye. Bye.